Shalom saudara-saudara yang terkasih. Shalom beloved brethren, let us evangelize. It's good that we can meet again through our online Bible study that conduct every Monday at 10 a.m. And with me, Evangelist Yudi Lengkong. We will start our study today. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we give thanks for your love. You give us this day so we can glorify your name. Father, we will study the word of God. And we pray, may the Holy Spirit will lead us so we can understand the will of God through the word today. We thank you, Father. We lift up these times only into your hand. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Brethren, in, the, in this midst of pandemic that still happened until now, of course, there are people who say or uh, even mentions that this is like the time of darkness. When things not going well, when there is no peace, when there is not convenience, then there is no peace, then how can we survive? What is the things that we need? So, through today's study, we will look at the time of Judges, how God give true peace even in the midst of darkness of Judges period. I will read Judges 2, verse 18. Judges 2, verse 18 say, And when the Lord raised up judges for them, the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hands of their enemies all the days of the judge. For the Lord was moved to pity by their groaning because of those who oppressed them and harassed them. Today we will look at the third part from the series from the hope in the midst of darkness, especially about the true peace. Brethren, in this life, we are always faced with two things, whether it is good or bad, or whether it is egocentrist or theocentrist, focus to oneself or focus toward God, things that seen or things that unseen, things that temporary or eternal. All of us face those stuff. But one thing that we need to realize is we must only chase after things that eternal, which is our God. Brethren, we as human beings, we feel with weakness. We want to walk in a good way and all right way, but often we fall into temptations and we choose the other part. The parts that can be considered as darkness, the way that not according to the will of God. In the period of Judges, sins were covered the whole people of God. And also darkness surround them. What happened? For them who fell into sin, their actions, their words, their sins, their wickedness, when they don't feel peace, when they don't feel comfortable, this pressure, oppressions, judgment from God, all of this became darkness for them. And for them who kept the faith also same. They also faced this darkness. They wish to come out from all of these oppressions, from all of the pressure. They also struggle for those things. So those things become darkness for them. They too face the darkness. Those judges come as light for them. They come to bring the light. 
And although many of them have weakness, but God used them so they can bring delivery from God. God used this to move forward the work of His redemption of God. Same today, we in our weakness, are we cause the history of redemption to move forward or no? We must look only to the will of God. Hence, we fall into our own comfort zone of peace that peace that pseudo. In the period of Judges, the Israelites ever felt this peace that pseudo. In our last study, we learned about Judge Gideon. Through Gideon, peace was given to the Israelites. But after Gideon time, the Israelites faced three years of peace, a false peace, a peace that pseudo. They thought this was the peace, but the peace was only in their mind. They thought they had peace, but it's a false peace. The word pseudo, pseudo means look like original or not real at all. This is what pseudo means. The judge brought hope and light in, the, in that period. But after three years since the period of Judge Gideon, the Israelites faced this peace that pseudo, a false peace. One thing amazing about Gideon was he became mighty warrior just like what God wanted him to be. We knew that the 300 of Gideon's uh, armies defeated the 135,000 Midian soldier, Midianite soldiers. This was incredible things. So although Gideon always asked for, asked for a sign from God, but in the end, he became a mighty warrior, just like God uh, prophesied about. Through Gideon, the Israelites defeated the Midianites, and there was peace for 40 years. But after Gideon died, the Israelites again forgot about God. They even didn't give respect to Gideon's household. They forget about the merit, the good things that Gideon did for them. Indeed, although Gideon was a mighty warrior, but in himself there was weakness. And what was his weakness? It was he has many wives. And through these many wives, he begot 70 sons. And one of the sons was from his concubine in Shechem. And this son's name was Abimelech. This Abimelech, in the later day, he appeared after Gideon passed away. He wants to become a king. He was a son of Gideon and he continued to bring, always bring the name of his father. In the period after Gideon, there was no oppression in Israel. But the oppression actually come from their own tribe, from their own brother, the Israelite. Although the Israelite didn't feel that the reign of Abimelech as an oppression because for the Israelite, God punishments of God judgment was from Gentile nations, not from their own people. But actually, they also suffer. Abimelech was a cunning man. And through the decision that not so wise from the elder in Shechem, Abimelech became king and he ruled as he wants. And also the people at that time, they make decisions and do things that, are, that seem right in their own eyes. Abimelech became king was actually not according to the law that given by God. God has gave a law regarding king. 
It was in Deuteronomy 17 from verse 18 to 20. A king must not have many wives. A king must learn and study the word of God, the statue and law of God. But this was not happened to Gideon or Abimelech. God avenged the wicked deeds of Abimelech and also the wickedness of people from Shechem. What did Abimelech do? He killed 69 of his own brother. 69 of his own brother. And this was helped by the Shechemite, the people from Shechem, and God avenged all their wicked deeds. In the end, Abimelech died, and about 1,000 people from Shechem died too. For three years of Abimelech reigns, the Israelites thought it was a time of peace, but it was a false peace. They lived according to what was right in their own eyes. But we can see that actually God felt sorry for the people. He felt pity for the people. In other words, he led the Israelites to enjoy that true peace. And when was that? It was the time of Judge Tola and Judge Jair. Let us see the true peace that God gave in the time of these two judges. Gideon, he ever mentioned that the one who will rule Israel was not him or his descendant, but only God is the true ruler for the Israelite. But the Israelite forgot about it. And God showed his justice, and God gave them true peace through these two judges at once. And this shows to us that our God is God that full with love and also justice, a just God. God raised up these two judges at once, which was Tola and Jai, but in a different region. If you look at judges, if you look at Judge Tola, he ruled in Shamir, which is the west part of Jordan River. And this uh, close to Shechem. While Judge Jair ruled in Gilead, religion of Manasseh, is the east part of Jordan River. What was the purpose God raised up these two judges at once? It was so that the Israel be able to see the law of God and also for them to learn about the way of God. So in the end, they can enjoy that true peace. Let us look at these two judges. The first one, Tola. Tola means worm or maggot. This was not a good name. He ruled from 1143 to 1121 BC. If you look at Judges 10, verse 1 to 2, it records about Judge Tola. Let me read. After Abimelech, they arose to save the Israel Tola, the son of Pua, the son of Dodo, a man of Ishaka. And he dwelt in Shami, in the mountain of Ephraim. He judged Israel 23 years, and he died and was buried in Shamir. The word after here referring to the reign of Abimelech. Abimelech that ruled according to what he wished, with no justice, then God raised up Tola after him. The purpose was to save the Israelites, to uphold the justice and truth for the people of God. There was no many informations about Tola, but it said that Tola was from the tribe of Issachar. And for Tola, because of duty 
came from God, he went to the region of Ephraim in the city of Samir. This teaches us that Tola left his hometown to serve in the place that God had appointed, and he served until the end. In our church, we have one song that says, At the place where you call, I will worship you, Lord. So whatever the place that God called us, whatever the place that God assigned duty for us, let us respond it and let us hold on until the end. This was done by Judge Tola. He was loyal until the end. The name Tola was warm or maggot, right? This shows us that he was nobody. When people hear his name, people already look down. But when Tola hold on to God, he can finish his duty until the end. He finished his duty without expecting any reward. This is amazing. When God gave peace for 20 years in the time of Tola. Hallelujah. Second judge was Jair. Jair means enlighter, the one who shine light. And he ruled for 22 years, and he ruled at the same time with Judge Tola. About Jair, it was recorded in Judges 10, verse 3. Let me read. After him arose Jair, a Gilead, and he judged Israel 22 years. Tola and Jair were the judges that raised by God at, at one at the same time. If we do a flashback, after Gideon died, the Israelites sinned again before God. They went back to worship idol. They worship other God. They committed sins and weakness. For three years, they used to do this. And Abimelech, who ruled at that time, did not care at all about the people. He only think about himself. But the Israelite actually was falling into a great crisis. That crisis was, there was no fear of the Lord in themselves. This is a great crisis. There was no fear of the Lord. This is a great crisis. If their conscience became hard and thick, when it cannot be planted anymore with the word of God, when they do not accept any advice, and they only consider themselves were the right one, then there was nothing can be done. The only thing left for them was punishment. This is so scary for people of God. But they still did not realize it. Without they realize it, they have lost the right teaching and they follow the wrong one. In the New Testament, Apostle Paul gave advice in 1 Timothy 4, verse 2. It says that, let me read. Speaking lie in hypocrisy, having their own concern shared with a hot iron. It means that their conscience seared. So their heart is so hardened with sin and wickedness. So when they were given a good advice, it didn't work anymore. And at this kind of time, God sent Jair with one mission, which was to enlighten the people of God. Brethren, is this an easy mission? Imagine, you are given a task to enlighten the people that used, with, used to with all the sins and weakness. And the people thought they did what was right before God. And when, and when we are sent by God to make them repent, is this easy? Yeah. 
No, this is not easy. But this mission must be done by this person, Jair. He must make the people of God realize about God righteous and justice. He must bring light to the people of God. And this was his duty. And this was shown through the meaning of his name, Jair, the one who shined light. In the end, was Jair success in this mission? Yes, he was. We can see how the people respect this judge. After 20 years of peace in Jair time, Jair was buried and it was done in honorable way. If you look at Psalm 18, verse 28, it says that, For you will like my lamb, the Lord my God will enlighten my darkness. Only the Lord and His were able to enlighten our darkness. To light our darkness. That's why we must respect those who bring the word of God. Because that people is the one who will give light to our darkness. And Jesus also did the same thing. And we too must do the same thing as well. We must do our mission, our duty. So, in the time of Jai and Tola, the Israel enjoyed true peace. But this peace was erased by the Israelites after some times. Because after these two judges died, they returned back to their old way, the wrong path. They fell into sin and wickedness again. If we read Judges 10, verse 6 to 8, and Judges 13, verse 1, we can see that in the end, God moved the Philistines and the Ammonites to punish the people of God. So that they can come to realization again, so they can cry out to God again. And what happened? Yes, the people of God cry out to God again because they no longer be able to bear the oppressions. Brethren, if you look at the book of Judges, after the time of Jair, the Bible continued to talk about Jephthah. It said that after 18 years of the oppressions by the Ammonites, God raised up Jephthah. But if we compare with the Chronicle of Judges, in in the in the third book of history redemptions over there it said that 17 years before the emerge of Jephthah God already sent one judge and who was that judge it was Samson so 70 years before Jephthah, Samson's already appeared. In the church, we can see that Samson appeared at the same time when there was oppressions from the Philistines and the Ammonites. After Judge Tola, which is the judge in the west side of Jordan, and Judge Jair, in the judge in the east side of Jordan, both passed away, then the Israel again worship idol. And at that time, God sent Samson. Samson was a Nazarene. The word Nazarite means those who are set apart for holy things. People that set apart to do holy things. So Samson become deliverer for the Israelite. He was set apart by God for something that holy. 
and this was even said before Samson born. Judges 13 verse 5 say this. If you look at the chronicle in the time of Judges, Samson born in the time of Tola and Jair. This is an interesting part from a chronicle, but maybe for those of you who not use of the year in the chronicle, it might be a bit hard. But Pastor Abraham Park give attention to this. There are many mysterious providence from those chronicles, and it was done by Pastor Abraham Park. That's why we must always give attention to these chronicles. Different with other judges, Samson was a very strong man, but he has one weakness regard to women. A few times Samson fell because of women, and because of his weakness, he lost his duty as a Nazarene. He forgot and failed about his calling. We can read about this in Judges chapter 16. If you look at the meaning of Samson, Samson means man of sun. He's supposed to be the like for the Israelites during the oppressions from the Philistines. But Samson, who's supposed to be the like for the Israelites, were in the darkness. He unable to overcome the pleasure of the flesh, the temporary pleasure, and he fell for that. This teaches us that if we leave the word of God, and if we fail in our duty they instructed to us, then that's it. That's the end of our calling. We will end up in, with failure and darkness. Psalm 119, verse 105 as reference for us. If we read Hebrew 11, verse 32, Samson was recorded as one of the people of faith. He was analyzed as the judge who has faith. So we can see that although Samson fell into temptations and darkness, but he really repented before God. And in the end, God recovered him and God gave him strength again. And Samson used this last chance to finish his mission. This is the story of Samson. Before Samson ended his reign, God raised up Jephthah, and Jephthah was from Gilead. Samson lived and reigned in the west part of Jordan, while Jephthah was in Gilead, which is east of Jordan. For better under understanding, you can refer to the map. You can look at the map of the tribe of Israel. It will give us a better understanding. So although Jephthah has a dark background because he was son of a concubine and he did not acknowledge by his brother, but God used him mightily. Judges 11, verse 1 to 3, we can read that. So although Jephthah was looked down by the people uh, and he was son of concubine and he faced deep sadness inside him, but God trained this person, Jephthah, and God raised him to, to, into a great position, a great judge, and at, a great judge at the right time. Jephthah, 
One of Jephthah's ability was he understood the history of redemption well. This is amazing. That is why God worked mightily in Jephthah, who understand well the history of redemption, and in the end, God gave him victory. <laughs> Judges eleven, fifteen to twenty-seven. You can read this later. You can see how Jephthah understand well the history of redemption. Brethren, for six years the Israel was trained, were trained and guided to grow in faith. How their faith was recovered by Jephthah, this great judge, and the stability of the nation was recovered. In this kind of foundations that built up by Jephthah for six years, three minor judges were raised up as well. They were Ibsan, Elon, and Abdon. They were minor judges. They ruled as a judge in a row after the time of Jephthah. They ruled when the nation was in stability, when the fate of the people were recovered. But unfortunately, although their names where they come from, where they bury after they die, the year of their reigns, all were recorded, but not so with their achievement. Their achievement was not so good. If we see the record about Ibzan's life, it was only about the wedding of his three of his thirty sons and thirty daughter. So it's only recall how he busy arranged the marriage of his children. And for Judge Abdon, he said that he had forty children and thirty grandson, and that's all recorded. That's it. Nothing about his achievement. And for Judge Elon, there was no information about him at all. And we know that these judges were not chosen by the people, but they were raised up by God. They who supposed to bring light, but they only focus on on, the, on themselves. Last week, I talked about preacher Brenner, right? Then I search, and now they have things called Pastor Brenner. And there is one person who openly established a university that's special for those who call as servant of God and also at the same time who want to become successful. And they have those courses for this. From here we can see that these three minor judges who were called for God's work, but they did not give their focus on that. They only focus on their own life. And in the end, how can God move his history redemption? Maybe when we heard about this, it seems like the end, the, the closing of period of judges was so gloomy. But brethren, actually, in this kind of period, in this dark period, when the vision of God was rare, when the word of God was difficult to find, then come a light that go on for a long time. God gave a light that go on for a long time. And who was he? It was Prophet Samuel. Hallelujah. Prophet Samuel. So, as a conclusion, in the midst of judges' spirits that fill with darkness, God sent those judges to become hope and light for the Israelite. But the Israelite oftentimes settle in peace situations that false, that pseudo. 
in their own convenient way. They forgot about their duty. Even the judges felt the same problem as well. In the end, the period of judges was closed with the immerse of a great prophets. About this, it was not recorded in the book of Judges, but after the book of Judges, it continued with the book of Samuel. And in the book of Samuel, it talks about Prophet Samuel, and we will talk more about Prophet Samuel next time. But today, I hope all of us, as the people of God, to check ourselves and how we're supposed to live our life. What kind of conditions we are in right now? While we are facing this new normal, and there is the word that say new normal, new spirit, do we have that new spirit too? Or are we just complacent by staying at home only? When it's time to worship, let us be faithful. Let us give an effort. Let us pray. Let us evangelize. Let us gather together to glorify God's name. Let us long for the house of God. So I encourage every one of you to take care of your health. And moreover, let us take care of our, our faith, the health of our faith, and receive that true peace by keeping the Lord's day, by keeping all the worship. But if you release it, then there's no choice. But let us don't be complacent in this false peace, a peace that's pseudo, a convenient that's pseudo. In the end of faith, we get demons and become stagnant. But let us bring up our spirit, the spirit that to worship God, and spirit to gather together and do our duty to evangelize and our service. I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that we can do this. Amen. Mari kita berdoa untuk menutup pelajaran kita. Bapak di surga kami bersyukur atas firmanmu. Let us close our study with prayer. Our living Father God, we thank you for your word. We believe that there are peace that suitors and peace that true before us. And we believe the Holy Spirit will work in us and help us not to be complacent in our own convenience. Help us to be able to chase the, the true peace only from God. And help us, Father, so we can keep the Lord's day and all other worship. Please give us this spirit, spirit that burning for the house of God. Your servant pray, may your light, may your word, may the Holy Spirit work mightily in all of us, your beloved children. Father, we thank you and we pray in the name of Jesus Christ with thanksgiving. Amen. Until we meet again, brethren, and if you have any questions, please watch up to our numbers, and we will discuss all the questions in some other times. One more time, until we meet again, and let us continue to pursue the true peace. Shalom, and let us evangelize.